Finally, the third installment in the completely bonkers Just Cause series has arrived and it's every bit as crazy as we'd hoped. Like the previous versions, there's at least a thousand square kilometers or 400 square miles for our Liberia, Myanmar and of course American viewers for the players to roam and wreak havoc. It's hard to believe, but it's been five long years since Rico Rodriguez first began blowing things up in Just Cause 2. He's now returned home for Just Cause 3, only to find it under control of an evil dictator, giving him the perfect excuse to blow up yet more stuff. But this time with new guns, gadgets and vehicles. And not just that, Riku now has a very cool wingsuit that can be combined with his grapple and parachute for extreme sports like mobility. Now as you might expect, after such a long period between titles, the third installment delivers some significant visual upgrades. Just Cause 3 boards higher definition textures, more complex and realistic destruction and the latest graphical effects such as global illumination, screen space reflections, pocket depth field, edge fade and Nvidia's Waveworks water technology. Although Just Cause 3 is an Nvidia Gameworks supported title, it's already running really well in AMD hardware, assuming you have the latest Crimson 15.11.1 beta driver installed, which addresses a number of graphical glitches Radeon users were facing in the game. Nvidia has also released the GeForce Game Ready driver 359.06 for Just Cause 3, and we've tested using that very driver. For testing, Fraps was used to report the minimum and average frame rates during two minutes of gameplay and we took the average from three runs. The test starts in Plager where we jump into a snazzy looking car that changes colour every time we load the test. We then drive the car taking the same path every time into an enemy facility before hitting a ramp and ending up in the drink. Before we get to performance numbers, here's a run through of that very test using the GeForce GTX 980 Ti at 1440p. First up, at the popular 1080p resolution, we find that despite Just Cause 3's impressive graphics, the game is very playable on lower end graphics cards such as the GeForce GTX 960 and Radeon R9 380. Speaking of which, here we see no difference in performance between the 2GB and 4GB models at 1080p, which isn't entirely surprising despite the fact that the game will use over 2GB of VRAM at this resolution when it's available. The 4 gb 960, for example, saw VRAM usage climb as high as 2.9 GB in our test. Still, with around 50 FPS on average and a minimum of 40 FPS or more, both the 960 and 380 provided a pretty smooth experience at 1080p. As for the rest of the cards tested, most had no trouble averaging around 60 FPS or better. Even at 1440p, where VRAM usage is well over 3 gigabytes, the higher capacity 4 gigabyte models of the GTX 960 and R9 offered no real performance advantage in Just Cause 3. The game plays very well as long as the minimum frame rate is kept above 30 FPS. So ideally at this resolution, gamers will want to run at least an R9380X or GTX 970. That said, for an optimal experience we recommend the R9390 or GTX 980. Finally, at 4K, gamers will ideally want a Radeon R9 Fury or better. So far I've been playing Just Cause 3 at 4K using a single GeForce GTX 980 Ti and the experience has been great. As I said, if you can keep the minimum frame rate above 30 FPS, the game plays surprisingly well and with a 41 FPS average, I didn't notice much input lag like you would in other games. Pulling myself away from this game to do some benchmarking wasn't easy. You would think grappling around blowing things up for the hell of it would get boring pretty quickly. So far it hasn't. Just Cause 3 is a great looking open world video game that plays extremely well on current AMD and Nvidia hardware, providing the latest drivers are installed. Prior to that, we've noticed a lot of graphical glitches and suffered a number of crashes, so fingers crossed that seems to be behind us now. Unfortunately, as it stands, no multi-GPU technology is working in Just Cause 3, and that isn't because AMD and Nvidia have been lazy. 
Rather, the Chassis Course 3 engine is not compatible with either SLI or Crossfire, meaning that Avalanche will need to release a game patch in order to enable multi-GPU support. It's been a rough year for multi-GPU owners. First we had all the issues with Batman Arkham Knight, and then Assassin's Creed Syndicate, and now word is broke that Rainbow Six Siege will be yet another title that's incompatible with multi-GPU solutions. Something we didn't show in this video is it focused on current generation GPUs with CPU performance. All of our testing was done using a Core i7-6700K, which only saw around 30-40% to utilisation. That said, I did swap it out for the Core i3-6100 and noticed around a 30% decrease in frame rate at 1080p and utilisation never dropped below 90%. Likewise, I saw around a 30% performance reduction when moving to my FX8350 system as well, with processor utilisation constantly above 70%. To keep that in mind, CPU overclocking when possible might be required to avoid GPU bottlenecks in the game's explosive yet tranquil environments. For now, I'm satisfied with the performance being delivered by both camps and I'm not sure if there's much more performance that can be squeezed out of either the Radeon or GeForce graphics cards. That said, I expect to see a few more game patches in the coming weeks and months and I really hope they can add multi-GPU support for better 4K performance. Thanks for watching another Hardware Unbox game performance video. If you have any questions at all, then please hit our forums at hardwareunbox.com or just ask us in the comments. Remember to hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Yeah.